Hello, and welcome to our session, How to Build a Ticket Intake Process That Actually Works. My name is Electra Heldy. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Smartsheet, and I'm joined today by the wonderful Derek Talene, Business Solutions Analyst on our IT team. Derek, in addition to having the most impressive collection of eyewear of anyone I know, and a really slick Smartsheet eyewear calendar to match, was responsible for architecting our internal IT ticketing solution. Thank you so much for joining us today, Derek. Thank you, Alexa. I'm glad to be here. Before we dive in, we'll go ahead and pause for a few minutes on this guy. So this session may contain forward-looking statements and any trademarks that we come across in the presentation are not endorsements. Our learning objectives today and what we really want to cover is we want to provide a high level overview of our end to end request management process using Smartsheet Core App and some premium solutions. We want to talk about best practices for managing request management and sheet security. And, you know, in today's session, we're showing you how we at Smartsheet fit together different Smartsheet tools to meet our organization specific needs. Every organization is different. So we hope today's session provides some new ideas on how you can architect a solution best suited for your organization. We do have the Smartsheet team standing by to help answer any questions you may have. So don't hesitate to throw a question into the chat window at the bottom of your screen. So Derek, when you joined Smartsheet, you were tasked with re-envisioning our IT request management process. What did you have at top of mind as you first thought through the solution that you needed to create? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at top of mind, the first thing that came to, to me was how is the user going to experience and what is the best way for them to uh, engage with the IT team as well as get their tickets resolved. So we needed to find a solution uh, where they could see the process work from the beginning all the way to the end, giving them uh, that end-to-end that -end visibility. Awesome. And the hero of the solution that we use today to get IT support is Dynamic View. So for those folks who need a bit of a refresher, Dynamic View is a premium add-on that enables you to share just sections of your sheet or report without having to share those individuals to the source item. So it's a way to securely share only the information you want folks to see from those underlying sheets and reports. And anyone who has access to Dynamic View who is a licensed sheet admin can create what we call new views in Dynamic View. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So Derek, walk us through at a high level how the IT ticketing solution you came up with works. Sure, absolutely. So dynamic view is, you can think of it like a layer that goes on top of a sheet. This can connect to a sheet or a report. Um, so we connected that to our IT ticketing sheet in the back end. That IT sheet is then of course connected to a variety of uh, update requests, alerts or alerts and reminders and other automations to help kind of drive the process in a smart sheet way. Uh, from there, we actually send out a satisfaction survey using uh, one of our Smartsheet forms. Uh, and then that all rolls up into a dashboard that the IT team and the IT manager uses uh, to better facilitate the process of the intake tickets. So it's kind of like a cake. We have Smartsheet, which has all of the content, and Dynamic View is pulling through that content into a top layer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you want to give us a, can you, can you walk us through the real deal? Can we like yeah, spin a ticket and fix a computer? Absolutely. So here is uh, our Smartsheet dynamic view for our IT help desk. Uh, this initial view is what the actual user sees. So me as an average Joe Smartsheet employee would come here to Smartsheet dynamic view uh, and see this row view where I have all of my previous tickets already here for me. So I can see on the left, uh, the status of my tickets. I have one in progress for a Zoom issue I've been having uh, and another one closed for a computer issue I had previously. I can see who it was assigned to and any resolution notes along the way. Uh, if I wanted to submit a new ticket to our IT team, I would come to this exact same place. Up here on the right, there's a bright blue button uh, that will open up the, de the de details panel on the right. I can even slide this over uh, left and right if I needed more space. Uh, the very first thing you can see is my name is automatically entered there. This is done in the configuration of uh, the dynamic view itself. So uh, Electra, if you were to sign in, you would see your name here rather than my name. However, if I was signing in uh, to write a ticket on behalf of a coworker, I could do that. Uh, so let's say their computer died. 
Uh, so I'll go ahead and fill in a few of these things. So I fill out a ticket for you. I'm in uh, IT in Bellevue here. Um, and today I want to let IT know that I have lost my, oops, lost my laptop charger. Uh, of course, if I lose my charger, my computer uh, is at risk of dying, and this is going to be business stoppage for me, so I'll rank it pretty high. Um, I have no additional notes and comments, so I'll go ahead and just mark save here. Uh, you can see as soon as it finishes doing its thing, that ticket is automatically added to the left. The status column automatically selects submitted and puts that on the left there so the IT team doesn't have to go through the effort of doing that. Um, you can see here, once I click it, the attachment tab opens up so that I can add any additional attachments that may be relevant to my ticket. If I were to click on any of these other rows, the details panel would update with all the relevant information. One so other thing. Can, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, one other thing you'll notice is on the right side, everything here grayed out when to read only view. This means I'm not able as a user to change these things, but at the very bottom, you can see the notes and comments section. So if I did have anything additional to tell the IT team, I could come here and tell them. So in this case, I have found my charger. I'll go ahead and hit save. And you can see once I did that, it shows up over here under the notes and comments section. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings here in dynamic view. Um, you can see here that I have it connected to a uh, report, which is really, really cool because the, uh, the report settings you can configure to have visibility through current user based off of one column or multiple columns. And Dynamic View is actually using those settings from the report view, bringing it all the way into Dynamic View. Uh, you can of course do this within Dynamic View, restricting it from one column, but by doing it through the report it gives you so much more flexibility on how you restrict things within Dynamic View. Uh, we have a setting for the view display, which is that row view that we initially saw. Uh, so I can go ahead and take any of the rows from the underlying sheets, move them into the row view, and then arrange them in any order I wish. Um, and this is pretty cool because it's different from the details panel, which I configure separately. So I can put one set of information in the, in the view display and another set in the details panel to give the user more uh, insight and more uh, visibility into what they're seeing so that they have um, some more dynamic views, if you will. Uh, and you'll notice as well that this looks almost identical to our form setup within our actual Smartsheet itself. So you created, the, so these tools that you're showing here are the elements that are used to create the view that we were looking at in the beginning. And the view that we were looking at in the beginning were all the tickets that I, a user, Electra, would have submitted. Um, and I would have gotten to this dynamic view through, it could be a link in a dashboard, it could be a link in a sheet, it could be, you know, I know that it lives on the IT help desk ticketing dashboard, which we link to from our employee resource dashboard. So we have this like journey that the user can click through to get where they need to go. And in doing so, we're creating that centralized source of truth of the IT dashboard or wherever that case may be, where I, as a user, I know, you know, this is where I go for help. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So it's pretty great because like all things with Smartsheet, it is a deep LinkedIn. So I can take this link right up here. I could pop that anywhere I want and the user can then find this exact dynamic view uh, from just about anywhere. Awesome. Well, show us a little bit what this looks like on the, on your side. <laughs> sure. So this right here is the actual uh, sheet itself that is con eventually connected to the dynamic view. I'm going to go ahead and refresh here so that we can see my ticket that I just added. Shows up right at the bottom. You can see there it's a business stoppage. Uh, in addition to the stuff that I put in here, I've lost my laptop computer, so on and so forth. You also see a variety of other columns that, of course, we did not see in Dynamic View. Uh, this would be something like the ticket number, as well as some additional notes columns that the IT team can then privately use uh, to make notes that they don't need to communicate to the end user. Uh, so that's all really cool, the way that we can restrict things to Dynamic View and then yet have a, di a open view for the IT team to what they need to do. Um, one of the other cool parts about this is we have the satisfaction survey link here at the right side. Uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, we have a bunch of automations within the sheet. So if the IT technician were to come in here and mark this as closed, an automation or alert would be sent out to the person in the submitted by column. This would let them know what, that it was closed. It would take the information from the resolution notes column, as well as send them this handy dandy satisfaction survey link. So this is just going to a regular form, but you see there's a little bit more to it. Uh, this form is actually 
uh, uses uh, some formula features from Smartsheet where it's actually pulling the ticket number from the ticket ID uh, and pulling it all the way in through the customer satisfaction survey sheet so that they can later on identify if there's a problem, uh, what ticket number exactly uh, was being referenced. So if I go ahead and click that open, brings us to the form. I can see once this loads that there's only a couple of questions here. I had some awesome service. Um, my issue is resolved, no additional notes. You don't see that IT, IT ticket number there. Once I click submit and go to the actual customer satisfaction portion of it, uh, we'll refresh here so it shows up. You can see that ticket ID and you'll have to trust me, it matches exactly the ticket ID that uh, was referenced in that original row, which is pretty awesome. So the IT team can then go manage uh, any incidents uh, and hopefully they continue to have uh, an awesome, uh, create an awesome experience for all of our internal smart sheet employees. But beyond that, right, like pulling in that, um, the ID, pulling in that information and having it all within our sheet here, this is what's going to enable us to use some other formulas to calculate values that we can then push into our dashboard. Is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So everything I showed you so far all then rolls up into our fabulous dashboard here. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and refresh so we can see um, some of these things update with the ticket that I just entered, although uh, it seems to be a little bit slow there. Uh, you can see all this information up here uh, about number of tickets opened, work stoppage tickets. Um, even over here, we have some information about uh, some time-based uh, data. So we can look at average time to close, average tickets closed per day. And we do this by utilizing another Smartsheet tool called Bridge, which actually pulls in that date information that we can then uh, use other Smartsheet premium apps to kind of pivot and make those uh, adjustments to calculate duration um, so we can look at that by average number of ticket, or we can even bring it down to the technician level. This dashboard also has a whole bunch of other stuff that the IT help desk team uses. Uh, we can see on assigned tickets. So the IT manager or whomever can come in here, uh, open up this report, uh, and then go assign tickets to who is ever relevant on their team. They see the, those business stoppage tickets right away uh, so that they can then target those high priority issues. Uh, and then here they see my assigned ticket. So this is just a report connected to the underlying smart sheet that is filtered to current user, which is me. So Electra, if you were to sign in, look at this dashboard and you're an IT technician, you would see every ticket that has been specifically assigned to you. And you could even work directly out of this report, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving yeah. down the road. Yes. So Oh, so we're using the report widget to pull in that report element here. And the way we're seeing my tickets or whoever the tickets are of the individual that's signed in is using the current user functionality. So when you're building your reports under the who, you have the option to create current or to select current user. Current user is what's going to whoever's logged in is going to see their tickets um, and they're not they're not going to see anyone else's. They're just going to see theirs. Absolutely which is a really cool feature that it even pulls all the way through to this dash, dashboard view. Um, so that's a, a pretty useful function. Um, so in addition to all of those reports and all of those additional things, uh, we have uh, details about uh, tickets, who they were assigned to, the number of the tickets that are open, how long it takes them to close on average, what departments they're going to. Um, and then at the very bottom here, we have customer satisfaction uh, information from the survey results. Uh, so you can see that we have stuff from 2019 and 2020. And the way that we built this, we used the today function so that when this moves into 2021, everything in 2019 goes away. The 2020 information slides to the left and the 2021 months show up on the right side there and everything just kind of auto populates based off the date, which is a pretty cool feature. And look at all that awesomeness. Yeah. I concur. Yeah. It's yeah. all awesome. So awesome. We have an awesome IT team for sure. So Derek, as our resident solution architect here, what are some best practices you think folks should keep in mind when they're creating their solutions with dynamic view and Smartsheet? Sure, uh, some best practices are definitely to connect to a report uh, because the report not only enables you to do some of those uh, other filtering functions that I told you about, but you can actually connect reports to multiple sheets. Uh, in this instance, we actually have a bunch of archive sheets in the background because uh, we want to keep that main sheet uh, focused on current work so once we're done with, we mark those items as closed, they automatically use the move row function, move it to an archive sheet, um, and then that archive sheet's connected to the report. So me as the end user can go into my dynamic view here. Uh, I can see things that have been archived, and yet it doesn't bog down our IT team with, with extraneous work and getting a very long sheets, if you will. 
Nice. Thank you so much, Derek, not only for walking us through the solution, but for building these processes and keeping the simplicity of the solution at top of mind. And thanks to each of you for joining us today. We'll leave you with a couple of additional resources. For anyone interested in additional information about Dynamic View, I highly recommend checking out the Smartsheet Learning Center for some self-guided learning content. Uh, for any ITPMO members of our audience, definitely check out our ITPMO Smartsheet Users section within our community where you can connect with like-minded folks. And if you'd like to explore more, you can dig into our Engage Brain Boosts for additional activity-based learning. We do have one for Dynamic View. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye-bye. <laughs>